Design Park District, date of January 19, 2023. Kay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye. Aye. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner McGarra. Here. Commissioner Rivers. President Hartman. Here. Can I ask everybody to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the personnel finance subcommittee and the regular board of commissioners of the Nine Park District dated uh, December 15th, 2022. I have a second. Second. Okay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye. Commissioner Aye. Aye. President Aye. Hartman. Aye. Okay. Aye. Guest? No guest. All right. <laughs> All right. I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as stated. So moved. Any changes to it? No. No changes. No. Nope. I have a second. Second. I have a second. Okay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye. Aye. Commissioner McGarra. Aye. President Hartman. Aye. Okay, commissioners' comments. Anybody uh, have anything? I got one. Go ahead. I'm going out of town next month. I would like to move the meeting a day early so I can attend. Okay, so we're looking at changing it to the fourth, uh, thirteenth, or fifteenth. 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 Yeah. Fifteenth. Okay. Do I have any problems? <clears throat> Anybody have anything? Same. All right. I will entertain a motion that we move February's meeting um, to the fifteenth of February, vice that Thursday. So move. I have a second. That. I have a second. All right. Kay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye. Aye. Commissioner McGarra. Aye. President Hartman. Aye. Okay. I'm sorry. Sure. I, oh, I'm just going to make a comment Please. about the the tree lighting. Oh, good. I just thought it was a really nice event, even though it was so cold outside. Mm. But the inside was so fun to watch the kids interact with everybody there. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was really nice, and the tree is beautiful. Um, that was a nice tree that was planted in honor of Marilyn. Um, I just thought it was nice, although. Frisky. It and was. Cool. It was very chill. Cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, I. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'd like to, uh, you know, echo what Cheryl says. I mean, that this park district just never ceases to amaze me. I mean, everything this park district does is second <laughs> to none. So, thank everybody, all the employees, for a great job that they did, and it was a, it was an awesome turnout. I thought. It was yeah, I mean, was I was shocked turnout. to see yeah, the people. Good. So again, great job, guys. All right, anybody else? Okay, anything from the attorneys? Nope. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve paid bills. I make a motion to pay the bills for December in the amount of $414,836.89. All right, I have a second. Kay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner McGarry? Aye. President Hart? Aye. Executive report? Yep. Um, so one of the first things I just wanted to point out, which you all saw as you walked in, we have our new Park District map there on the wall. So um, it was a lot of work between um, various staff to kind of look at it and review it and make sure that we had everything covered. Christine did a great job coordinating with the vendor that ultimately printed it, but I think you probably went through 10 different versions to finally make sure we had everything on it. And it's a good, it's a good um, illustration of all the property that you know the park district owns in the green there throughout town um because i think people really underestimate and forget you know all of what we have in our response how many for, acres you know whether it includes right over so over 700 yeah. acres mm -hmm. um so over 700 and what 50? 700 sorry yeah, yeah no, over, that's, yeah that's and a lot so of acreage. you know people don't think mm -hmm. about the fact that we maintain all the boulevards um and we have just other random parcels of property that might not be neighborhood parks with our name on it um but we do maintain a lot and we and we you know are proud of, of everything that we maintain and what we offer to the public um again given that we're only six percent of a residence tax bill and we only have 20 full-time employees you know and a handful of part-timers that work hard for us as well 
Um, but this will be a good, you know, a good tool to use in board meetings if we're talking about, you know, different areas yeah. or different love parts it. that we're gonna love that it. we're gonna renovate. Um, mm -hmm. And also, we're gonna print up copies of this to give to our uh, maintenance staff so they can have them in trucks. So Rich can tell his staff, hey, you're going to this park in case you've never been there. Here's where it is. Mm -hmm. Chad can do that for his rangers. Um, and we'll obviously have it on our website as well for people to see. But it, it really turned out nice and. It's really nice. Yeah. Now, this, this is great because we do talk a lot about parks and stuff, and sometimes you're sitting there going, right. where is that yeah. park? Right. Mm -hmm. But now, it's right there. So, yeah. that, that, guys, again, <clears throat> it just ceases to amaze me. Yeah. It's got some trails marked on there that we're responsible for, too. Um, the trails in red are not ours, right? But the trails that connect to them and like, the yellow is orange, those are our trails. So you can okay. see what's kind of like our jurisdiction and then where maybe it becomes a county trail, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, so. this looks good. And, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the biggest, the biggest thing is with over 700 acres of park and for the amount of personnel that work here is off the charts. It's literally off the charts. To maintain all that responsibility with the amount of people we have is, it's mm -hmm. just second to none. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to have to redo this, yeah. so we, we Good thing we're <laughs> yeah, cross our fingers. Yeah. Oh, I did you see? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anything else, Eric, on the? Uh... Um. So the other thing, um, I did touch on it briefly in the finance meeting, but the Edina uh, Edina bike trail, um, it looks like they'll probably start construction next week on it. We hope. Um, we had a pre-construction call. Um. Actually, the four of us here, me, Rich, Christine, and Kay, had a pre-construction call with both Hitchcock Design Group as well as Landworks. That's actually going to be doing the construction, just to be sure that everyone's on the same page, to be sure that the proper signage is posted and that the public is notified that there's construction in the area. Um, there was an individual from Stormwater Management on the call that maybe threw out a curveball or two um, that you know they weren't aware of they said well it's already been permitted and the guy said well i'm sorry but you need these coffer dams here to block this water flow before you work on the culvert and things like that so it's definitely a difficult area to work on um and it's been a kind of a long time coming from the time we applied for the grant a while ago to having them hopefully start construction next week so that'll be that's exciting to get that project going mm -hmm. well that um, that's a big that's a big thing in this lake county because we have those drain i guess they're drainage ponds mm -hmm. And God forbid you cut any further than the Lake County requires. Correct. I mean, there yeah. have been subdivisions in the state of Illinois that have been sued. Sure. Because of those drainage ponds. And yeah, so it's sure. they take it pretty serious. For sure. Um, and then obviously the board, you know, I was going to comment on the positivity tree and the holiday lighted trail, but the board obviously made real nice comments on that. And we did think it was a great event and our recreation team um, <coughs> okay. Kay and Christine and, and their staffs did a great job, you know, planning that event and managing it that day and mm -hmm. promoting it. Um, and then Chad's got, you know, some information in the report here too about his rangers. And, and Chad has a good team of rangers and we know that just as a function of hiring good people that we're going to lose them occasionally, right? Because they are yeah, good. Yeah. So, so they're going to be sought out by other people and have a lot of other opportunities. And um, Chad has a, a good one right now that we're sad to see go. Um, it's Natalie Martinez who's bilingual um, and she's just super personable and intelligent but she got a nice full-time job in her field of study um, but she might still be around for some um, special part-time stuff like that but yeah but that's yeah. one of the challenges that Chad just has to kind of deal with and we know it's gonna be that way um, but we're not gonna lower our quality standards for those people because they're just too important mm -hmm. um, yeah and then the last thing was, if you look in the report as well, you'll see something that looks like a banner, kind of pole signage, yeah. um, just to give an explanation on what that is. Um, with the so we've got three of these currently up around town. One is over on Bethesda on 173. It's, it's erected. And then there's another one on Sheridan, on the corner of like Sheridan and Shiloh by the post office. There's one there. And then there's another one on Lewis, kind of by the footbridge, by Lewis and Salem. Okay. Um, and so those are going to house <coughs> banners, right? Just like the banners that we have in the parking lot, if you've noticed those recently. 
So these are additional locations to put banners out throughout the town to promote things, whether it's, you know, our concert series or, you know, maybe we could put Help Wanted signs on there if we wanted to or just promote the Trail of Treats or the Christmas Trail, right? So just to kind of be visible throughout the community. So I think that will be a neat, you know, and additional park, marketing. Park district owned, not city owned? Correct, mm -hmm. correct, yeah. yeah. So we did work with the city to go through the application, the permitting process to get those approved. So they are in place and put up with the blessing and the cooperation from the city. So permits were approved. Um, we worked with a, you know, a great sign company and we had a contractor um, install them for us. So they are strong, they're sturdy, they should last a very long time. And the image that is in your board report Kind of the gray scaled area is where the banner placement okay. is so they will be double sided and you know two banners per pole that's also the location in which the maintenance team would put up the a-frame signs um, every summer for concerts and other programs so these permanent placed post will replace those a-frame signs so that also will alleviate the maintenance team from having to run out and put those into position every week and to collect those. So the banners will just stay up throughout the summer to promote special events. Mm -hmm. So who, who in the city approves so. this? On, is this on our property? It's our property, but, but I mean, they have, we have to have it approved by the city. Doing work on your house or something, yeah. right? Okay. You have to yeah. get a permit yeah. and Rich Einstein. And, and, and also because the one on Sheridan sure Road, of course, and State whatnot. Road and Lewis being County, mm -hmm. There's some additional approvals that need to be put okay. in place for both of those. So no, I mean, I just like anything we do on Sheridan Road needs uh, right. different approvals, uh, blue, blue. And, and so does Lewis, right? So, um, and of course, in working with Julie to look for underground placement and okay. things of that nature, make sure they don't hit any wires. Yeah, I was, I was kind of shocked that we, but no, that yeah. but whatever we, we have to do. Way to spread our message and just increase mm -hmm. marketing because you know not everyone uses social media, not everyone goes to the website, right? So. Um, no. And they'll they'll look sharp. They're, they're done well. So. You need like machines to place the. Yeah, we can use lift truck. Mm -hmm. So that is all. That's it for. All right, that's it. Portion of the report, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, new business. Uh, what the inner fund for the transfer? Yep. So, um, you know, we do these every year. We have a resolution to authorize the transfer of district funds. Both of these funds were in the budget, and these were the exact same amounts <laughs> in the budget. So what we're looking at here okay. in. Resolution 901 is a transfer from the general fund to the construction fund in the amount of $100,000. And that, again, is just to continue to accumulate funds there for projects. And then the other transfers from the recreation fund to the Shiloh Pool Fund in the amount of $81,776, which was the anticipated budgeted amount to make the fund whole um, when we prepared budgets. But again, if, if that may require a second transfer before the end of the fiscal year. But we so looked at this is all one now. resolution. Yeah, it's all one resolution. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'll entertain a motion that we approve the uh, inner fund transfer resolution 901. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 901, authorizing the transfer of funds of the Zion Park District <coughs> uh, from the general fund to the construction fund in the amount of $100,000 and from the recreation fund to the Shiloh Pool Fund in the amount of 81776 I have a second. Second. I have a second. Kay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye. Aye. Commissioner McGarrett. Aye. President Hart. Aye. Okay. First up. Mr. Boss, you're up. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, we'll be here. <laughs> so, uh, we're into 20, 23 already, but we're going to go back. Do you have any, does it, you want the lights like this, or is it helpful if I close them? Shut up. Better. Oh, yeah. that, that yeah. looks perfect. Good. Um, as you look at this first slide, you see the NBC logo up there. And the reason that it's up there is NBC owns the Golf Channel, which I think is Comcast, which I think it's Channel 199 up here. You yeah. scroll by it on occasion. Uh, they're the 900 pound gorilla in the room as far as golf is concerned. Content rich uh, channel with golf instruction, what's going on on the PGA Tour, golf tournaments, travel, you know, destinations, uh, but it's, it's got a lot of eyeballs on it on a daily basis. The Golf Channel uh, owns 
Golf Now, which is our uh, provider for our point of sale um, computers that we have at Shepherd's Crook and at Shiloh. For that, uh, for them providing the hardware, we let them have two tee times a day to barter that they sell. So we're in constant, you know, intermingled with Golf Now, uh, with uh, the Golf Channel and, and Golf Pass. Golf Pass is uh, part of their web presence, which is a place that customers go before they drive 50 miles. What are people saying about this golf course? And uh, you get a lot of reviews. People have told me, hey, I came here based upon the review and you didn't disappoint us. Um, so it's an important part. I look at it every day. Uh, and I mean, Charlie does too. Charlie will come by and go, did you see that review last night? So we, we were, we're constantly looking at it. Um, so this is a summary of uh, not only Shepherd's Crook, but, and not, no, it's not 250 golf courses in Chicago. I'm not going to go through all of them. But there's about 10 that we consider to be in our, our competitive set. And we did, back in 2018, we hired uh, the go-to firm, called Pellucid, they did a survey for us here at Shepherd's Crook, and they did a little bit of Shiloh. Um, but they also have a database of what they call local area golfers. So um, this is all, anyone who's commented on our facility, may have played it that day, may have played it a month earlier, but all of the comments, people, you can't go to a, a website <coughs> and just try to ruin their day by posting stuff. They have to verify that it was a purchase and they do that through our POS system. So these are all legitimate reviews. Um, so I'll show you how it's set up. Hey, Al, yes. is, this, is this for just Illinois or is this Southern? I didn't go into Wisconsin. I looked at a couple places, but they had such few reviews on like Brightondale, which would okay. be a, a place that people go that they weren't really, they wouldn't be statistically okay. valid because there's like three reviews. So, but this is, you'll, you'll see as I go through the golf courses and you'll recognize a lot of them. But this is what we'll, we will see in the comment section. This isn't us. This is another golf course that's, I think when I looked last, uh, their greens fee on a weekend is $99. We're 74. But when you miss the mark on something as critical as the greens, people will let you know about it and, and this course is one of the best in Illinois always has been uh, but they missed the mark and you'll see that the, when I get to a couple other slides there's these six um, you know critique points conditions value layout um, friendliness pace and the amenities that you've got and, and the difficulty on the bottom but that's not a rating that's just a comment and, and that's They'll one tell of the you best about, golf about the golfer up there the golfer says he's a 15 to 19 handicap <coughs> and plays a few times a week so you do kind of see the person that's making the comment because they are anonymous hmm. so the this is the only slide that I have in here that isn't either a municipally owned golf course or a park district operated golf course. But you can see up here, if you can see it, uh, 4.3 out of 403 reviews, and that's their entire history. In this year, they had 63 reviews. 51 out of 63 said they would recommend the golf course to family or friends. And they rate them on a five-point scale. Again, conditions, 3.8, which isn't good. Anything below a four, you've got some, some work to do. Uh, value, people are saying, hey, value, the diff difference between what you pay and what you experienced is basically what the value is. The layout, rated very high because it is a very good uh, layout. Pace of play always comes in a little bit low you'll see every one that i've had, that i have up here some are a little bit lower than that but people really it, it affects their experience when it's just miserable out there and you're waiting on every shot um, hmm. so everybody tries to work on pace of play it's very difficult to do it's a confrontation with golfers about speeding up and keeping place but keeping pace but it's something that we do amenities 
super small clubhouse they've got, but they've got a beautiful driving range. They do it top notch all the way around, um, but amenities aren't rated high. Staff friendliness is, is pretty good. So you get a feel for what we're doing here. This is all in the last 12 months, so it's the year of 2022. So one of our competitors, which I'm a little bit familiar with, um, <laughs> conditions 4.2, which is good. Value 4.2, they like the layout. Pace of play again is not in the mid fours or the upper fours, it's in the low fours. Um, amenities 4.2, staff friendliness uh, rated very high, which is good. Um, so you're looking at 89.7%, 113 out of 126 reviews uh, in 2022 said they would recommend it to uh, their golfing buddies. Hmm. Deerfield uh, Park District owns and manages Deerfield Golf Club. Conditions 4.2, value 4.3, layout 4.3, pace super slow. They're very very busy. They put a lot of rounds through there, so it can get it can get congested. Amenities 3.9. <clears throat> they just don't have a great clubhouse you know facility like many do. Um, staff friendly is 4.3, which is pretty good. So 87.3% said they would recommend it. A lot of reviews, lifetime, almost 700. Hmm. Steeple Chase, Mundelein uh, Park District, 69 reviews for the year. People love this golf course. They love the layout at 4.8, the value, uh, pace of play, amenities. Not a not a big clubhouse, not a driving range. Uh, staff friendliness, very good. And you can see from 4.6 to 4.6, they've held their own of a lifetime versus just this year. Heritage Oaks, which is the Northbrook Park District, just spent, I think, six million on the clubhouse. Conditions 4.1, we played down there. Mm -hmm. Value 4.2, layout 4.2, pace 4.2, amenities 4.4, staff friendliness 4.6. So they've actually raised their, you know, rating a little bit over the year from 4.0 to 4.2. I'm sure people enjoyed the, the money they spent on the, uh, the renovation of the golf course. Why is the side on the left? The bars? Yes, what's that? <clears throat> well, this the is stars. how many stars were rated in conditions. Okay, okay. Right. Thank yeah, you. So, so those added up would be the amount of reviews they've had. Oh, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is. Bittersweet and Gurney, I believe it's owned by the village of Gurney. Mm -hmm. It's not a park district course. Um, conditions 4.2, value 4.3, people think they're getting their money's worth. Layout 4.5, people like that. Pace 3.9, you know, and that's a deal breaker for a lot of places. People just say, you know, I'm not coming back here. It was a miserable experience. Um, amenities 3.9, they have a friendly staff, obviously, and a 97% of the folks said they would recommend it. They're just not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, another spot that I managed 100 years ago before it was even the bridges of Poplar Creek back when it was Moon Lake and it was a, working out of a machine shed basically. Um, <clears throat> conditions, this is Hoffman Estates Park District. Uh, value 4.4, layout 4.5. They do a good job with pace down there, 4-3. Amenities, 4-2, and staff friendliness. So 80 out of 82, 97.6% of the folks said they would recommend it. Uh, just down the road, Lake Bluff. Obviously, they've been going through a lot of things with Save Lake Bluff Golf Course uh, in the last year. I'm not exactly sure what what happens down there. I know 
you know, two point nine on the layout. People do like the golf course the way it's laid out, but conditions are not what people want. There's just a lot of great options out there that do have better conditions. Value three point six. Layout three nine. Like I said, pace is a little slow, evidently. Amenities. They're saying they just don't have the amenities. Staff friendly is so pretty good at, at 4.0. And 67.6%. I believe that's the lowest referral rate that I've got out of the competitive set. Just across the street, um, you know, you've gone from 4.1 to 3.9, going through some ownership changes, I believe. Exists in a floodplain, so your conditions can be up and down. Uh, 3.8 on conditions, uh, value, though people believe they're getting their money's worth for what they're paying. Uh, people enjoy the layout, pace of play, again, it's a constant thread through everyone. A little slow, amenities, uh, staff friendliness is good, but they've gone from 4.1 to 3.9. And an 83% referral rate. Bonnie Brook, just down the street, Waukegan. The folks in the area are pretty blessed to have some good golf courses right here in Lake County. Um, they've maintained 4.6 to 4.6, very high rating conditions. People enjoy it, 4.5. Value at 4.8. People believe they're getting their money's worth in a very very big way. Layout 4.6, pace is pretty decent, amenities are decent, staff friendliness very high at 4.8. 96.1% referral rate. My Shepherd's Crook um, from 4.7 to 4.8, so we're going the right direction. I believe the patio's got a lot to do with some of that. Um, 4.8 on conditions. And that's you folks giving Charlie the equipment he needs and the labor he needs and uh, you know, all those kinds of things. He can't do it with a weed whacker. Uh, value, um, even though we do hear sometimes that we are a little high priced, that might be a little local. As Mr. Hartman said, go visit some other golf courses and you'll find it's $74. It's good. Um, yeah, it's, it's $25 under a lot of folks. People love the layout at 4.8, pace decent, but we're always working on it. Amenities, 4.3, that's obviously when you don't have a driving range, you kind of get whacked on that. We don't have the huge monster clubhouse. We don't have a concession stand out on the golf course like a lot of the folks do have. But the, the Porta John, you folks, are you know, now the permanent comfort station that we have on the golf course. That should help because that was back in the, that survey I talked about from Palooza, on course restroom, Shepherd's rated very low because it was just a portage on sitting out there. Uh, staff friendliness 4.8. So 83 out of 83. So we'll take 100%. I've never seen that number. I've taken a lot of tests in my life. <laughs> and so this is kind of just a, a snapshot at the end. Shepherd's ended as the highest rated condition wise. Value tied with Bonnie Brook, which is, I think, some people, like I say, in this area are pretty blessed to have places they find that are value. Uh, 4.8 is again tied for layout with steeplechase, pace of play, 4.4 uh, tied with steeplechase, amenities, 4.3, and uh, just behind Heritage Oaks, but you've got a monster clubhouse and those things, so you're going to get that that kind of rating. And staff friendliness tied with with uh, Bonnie Brooks, so uh, we're happy with the year. Looking forward to next year, obviously, and uh, try to keep that number up there. Well, well Alan, we're thrilled with what you do out there and yeah. yeah. your staff. Absolutely. But, and I thought it was best if you have good people, you lose them. What's I'm that? still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. 
But I mean, he showed me this. Alan showed me this like maybe a month ago. He gave me this presentation. And I was like, wow, that is super interesting. I'm sure yes. the board would love to see it. And it's just amazing to me, like what him and Charlie, you know, always const constantly are watching, right? And mm -hmm. and benchmarking themselves against other courses in the area, right? And so. And and let's go back to the people now. Right. So Charlie's out there on an 18 hole course, literally by himself, maintaining it, keeping it keeping it up to par, right? Well, I mean, he's got, his, he's got his staff, but yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah. yeah, but I mean that that's well, a lot. He's, right he's there. overseeing it. He's he's the spray tech. I mean, there are people that have eight thousand dollars spray techs that all they do is spray. Charlie right. sprays. Charlie works on the irrigation system. That's Charlie's. My Charlie comes right up there. with daily tasks with us every morning. At, so, that's my point right he keeps, there. He, he keeps his eye on Shiloh too. I mean, what's yeah. going on over there? I mean, that's so all I'm all done. Oh, yeah. for for the amount of people and the the acreage and what we have to be responsible for. But you know, yeah. the putting green that you folks were, were, were good to good to us to approve. Uh, the golfers are gonna, you know, just be one more thing that Another the people say. If you haven't been to Shepherd's Creek lately, you haven't been there. Yeah, and I've I've heard a lot of people already discussing that, and they're already ecstatic over it. That so, again, Al, I mean, you and your staff do just like Cheryl said, it's second to none work. Awesome. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Out of applause. Okay. <laughs> Jesse, no fun. Oh, Jesse, Okay. Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> What? No that in the minute. was very <laughs> impressive. You that put the teaching. I like Thank it. Thank you. All right, the district purchasing policy. Um. Yep. Yeah. So as I mentioned, you know, this is kind of in relation to and the change in the um, paid bills report. Right. We evaluated everything. This purchasing policy. Um, reached out to some other districts and kind of figured out what their purchasing policies were as far as thresholds and who can approve what. So that's kind of what we're um, deciphering here with the levels of purchasing. Um, if the purchase costs $500 or less um, and it's within the department's uh, budget, that can be made you know, without quotes or competitive bids or board approval, obviously, and invoices at that level can be approved by department heads, right? So that would mean you know, Kay and Rich, you know, could sign off on, on things in their department at 500 or below. <coughs> um, and purchases of, with a cost of between the range of 500 to 5,000 um, may be made without quotes or competitive bids um, if it's, you know, again, within the budget. Um, and invoices at that level, again, would be, for example, reviewed by Rich and okay by him, but then signed off ultimately by me. Um, so that would be the second level. Anything from five to thirty thousand within the budget, um, you know, would be made by you know multiple quotes or competitive bids or board approval, right? Once we're in that range of expense, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to get multiple quotes on those things. Okay. Um, and that again would be reviewed by the department head um, and approved by the executive director. And then anything at thirty thousand dollars or more um, would obviously be made by competitive bid. That's just in compliance with Park District Code. Um, there's that specific section 81C of the Park Code that says anything above 30,000 has to be competitively bid. And then obviously we always bring those to the board for approval. Um, so those are the different threshold levels. Um, this would be something, you know, this document would be something that the auditors would look at, right? So they'll come in and they'll pull and they'll say, okay, if a expenditure is, you know, over six hundred dollars or over five hundred dollars, and it wasn't signed by the executive director and okayed by the department head, you know, if it was under five hundred dollars, did the department head just sign off on it, right? So we're kind of setting purchasing controls here with this document, um, as well that the that the auditors will verify, <coughs> you know, when they come out and do their field testing. Um, so kind of the second part here in the policy is. Um, you know, just noting the fact that we do have P cards um, and and the WEX fuel cards, which is um, recently implemented. So the WEX fuel card is exclusively for fuel. You know, the purchasing card is just for kind more for convenience to purchase items. Um, and in both of those situations, you know, staff have to sign um, an acknowledgement uh, use form of authorization. So, for example, like on the P card, there can never be alcohol spent on it. On the WEX fuel card, <coughs> it can only be spent on fuel. Um, 
So those people have to use their cards responsibly. Um, and then also, you know, if we can never utilize some of these competitive procurement programs, whether um, it is like, there's a there's kind of a variety of them out there now. You know, we use SourceWell a lot. We use the TIPS um, Purchasing Alliance for the um, retractable system that we purchased. So those basically say that, you know, you can take comfort in the fact that you're getting the best price because it's already been pre-bid, right? So if you're buying a truck or a tractor or whatever, if you're buying this one, you know, you don't have to go out and bid it because it's already been bid and gone through the process. So we utilize those when we can. Um, and then the last section here is just, you know, talking about the fact that when we can, as much as we can to the extent we can, we'll use, you know, local businesses, uh, women in minority, minority owned small businesses. Um, <coughs> you know, again, that is uh, a lot of times that language is in bid packages um, and is part of, is part of bids. Um, and, you know, we always try to utilize, you know, those different sectors for, for work when we can, right? But we still reserve the, you know, right to select obviously the best price and the best service and the best quality. Um, but we're just saying that, you know, we make an effort to think about those other factors as well. So, okay. So that's kind of the... All right. The full, and we never, we never really had an official purchasing policy before. Um, before it was the executive director just signed everything. Okay, that's, that was my question. Like, yeah. Was there what changes you just were updating it because or getting a new one because you haven't had one correct okay. okay yeah yeah all right and then of course the lawyers put their John yeah. Henry on yeah I mean and these policies are these are just policies that we're creating that these are these are the kind of things that the board approves right okay just, just policy and direction and strategic things like this so all right I just have a question on this item C yeah it says you know the five to thirty thousand yeah uh, quotation competitive uh -huh. or board approval so does that mean you can you can do that without board approval yeah from five to thirty thousand um, if we've got it in the budget right then we can purchase things at that at that level at so thirty thousand dollar level thirty thousand well yeah, yeah thirty thousand or below right so a lot of times chemicals I don't purchase chemicals could be seven or eight thousand dollars you know um, pool chemicals pool chemicals rich can get you know, a load of gravel. I've, I've, or I've had equipment that was 18 grand in yeah. replacement part, gotcha. believe it or not. <laughs> no, I believe it. Yeah. Okay. So some of those things, I know, you know, and that's, that's. I mean, I understand what your concern is on that point. Um, but and I, I'm, I'm assuming yeah. is that that was already in process right to, from now, right? You yes. were already doing, you were already following that. Yes, yes. It was, that was always, honestly, we really didn't have a limit set. To be honest, so the only limit that we had set before was anything that was <coughs> over thirty thousand, the board approved, and it was competitively bid, and that was just a result of compliance with Park District code. So we never had, you know, Whoa. different different yeah. thresholds established before. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So, and again, Cheryl, we looked at I looked at different policies from Waukegan Park District, Gurney Park District, Mundelein contacted their business managers and say kind of what does your purchasing policy look like and what thresholds do you use okay. yeah Thanks. all right I'll entertain a motion that we approve the uh, purchasing policy I'll make a motion to approve design park district new purchasing policy as stated in the document I have a second Second. I have a second okay please read the roll call Commissioner Pye aye Commissioner McGarra aye Commissioner Rivers uh, President Hartman. Aye. Okay. Next is the boiler. Okay. Yep. Next is presentation is rich for the yeah. boiler upgrade. There's no <laughs> numbers on this one. It's going to be just like watching <laughs> cartoons. Here, going. You want to start? You want to start? Yeah. <coughs> so I'm sure everybody remembers early last summer we took on the boiler upgrade project here. Um, it was a rather pricey project, so. Um, along during the project, I just felt I'd take some pictures and just kind of make a little slideshow so that you can see the process and kind of what what happened, like a before and after scene. So, um, all right. right now, this is a demo process, um, pretty elaborate. This is just one spot <coughs> where we took a shot here. Um, there was a lot of equipment in and out here, believe it or not, it was right on the other side of this wall. That's where all this work was done. <coughs> 
So um, we had to remove a really huge tank. Um, we ended up cutting a hole in the roof and then bringing a crane through the back side of the building to bring this tank out. All this equipment wow. was put in here before the roof was put on the back of the building. So um, we were able to utilize that same hole for venting on the new system. So it's not like we just put a hole in the roof and, and left it. So um, just any buzz. Space bar. Space bar. <laughs> so this is actually the old circulating pumps that were in place for the building. This is what moved all the heat water throughout all your entryways and everything up to the rooftop units for supplement heating. Just to give you an idea on the size of those, those are probably the size of this table wow. where you're sitting. Whoa. Yeah. Um, pretty much the size of a small SUV. Um, very inefficient, very uh, very outdated. That lower pump was actually original with the building. The small one was actually added in later for off um, summer use. We still move hot water through, through uh, dewatering system, so. It was kind of just something to help save energy, but you know, again, it was very outdated. That's what the new pump circulating pumps are. Go ahead. The last slide you were just on. Yep. Can you just go back one. Arrow left, Rich. Okay. Yep. That thing that's in the back that's green. Uh, this year? Yeah, what is that exactly? So that's actually a, a domestic water heater. That's not too terribly old, believe it or not. It's wow. just very hard used. That's what takes care of all your showers, um, your potable water in the building. Yep. Okay. And these are actually the storage tanks for that unit. Okay, so you thought it said it's not incredibly old. Okay. It's uh, 2008. Really? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, that's actually something we probably will be sooner or later looking for a replacement. Um, domestic water is one of those things we really got to pay attention to on how we keep it sanitized. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want any foreign or any kind of, um, you know, bacteria is linked back to us. So that's kind of one of those things that we have to keep up with. Looks like you won't have to go out of the roof for that one. Not that no, one. no, no. Believe it or not, I actually replaced that one. The old one was actually the whole footprint of this pad, which goes back another eight feet. Um, that one we brought in on a two-wheeler. <laughs> it was not much to that. So, mm. but yeah, um, that's just a small thing there. Um, Thank you. So that's actually the new circulating pumps there. To give you an idea on those, those are about the size of a five gallon pail. I can replace those single-handedly with an eight-foot ladder. That's all there is to that. Wow. Wow, that's right. Um, power consumption, electrically, it's actually a third less than what was running before. It's, it's really way less than what it should have been. Wow what was previously previously there. You can see some of the new pipe work that's been done now. That's all. Um, the uh, previous piping that was in there was some old PVC. You can see some of that was demoed out up here. Um, when we had the demo going on, um, when we cut into some of the piping, it was so brittle that it was coming apart and just exploding on us when we were cutting it apart. So we have to change quite a bit of piping during this process. Um, which helps the efficiency of the heating throughout the building. You start heating the water here and then you get it half an acre away, you got to maintain that um, level of heat. Otherwise, you just heat the water for nothing and it's not, by the time it gets to the zone, it does nothing for you. So, hmm. These are the controls for those new pumps. It's the size of about this big. That's, what, that's the brains for those pumps. Tell them to run, when and not to run. Yeah, nice. Does that so. display give you like where there's problems? Not this one. Farther down, we have another system for that. So this is the old baseboard boiler. This ran did all your entryways and all your perimeter heating. Um, that unit there was um, original with the building as well. Again, that was a massive, massive unit. You can see the controls here. Um, old incandescent lighting. It was toggle switch everything. Something failed. You didn't 
you didn't know until you didn't have heat. That's mm -hmm. the bad part about that. Um, a lot of this all got cleaned up in the process of doing this. Mm -hmm. That unit there was our, um, you can see this piping right here. This is that plastic piping I was telling you about that got demoed out. This unit here basically took care of the RTU heat. Um, if you've ever heard any term of the preheat stuff, what that does is that's before the gas burners take over on the units. This is a supplement to that. So instead of running like a 200,000 BTU burner times four, which is how many units we got on this roof, we're running one 50,000 BTU burner to do all four of these now. So very, very economical down the road here for mm -hmm. what we're going to have done here. Um, this thing was um, put in later after all the ice rink equipment was downstairs, so it was actually eight feet off the ground. Um, very hard to work on. It was just the way it had to be put in just because of all the equipment we had in previously, you know, in conjunction when we had an ice rink going. So um, I was glad to see that unit go. <laughs> um, so there's your finished product. There's your new circulating pumps. There's your two mm. new boilers. Wow. Give you an yeah, idea on how cool. big those boilers are. They're about the size of this cabinet right here. Mm. Where cool. you, you, where you at? I know. <laughs> where am I at? No. In the picture, where we they at? This right here? This is yeah. right outside this wall here. It's where the Zamboni room is. The Zamboni room, it's yeah. right down here, Jess. Wow. Yep. It's right there. Yeah. So, I mean, when you talk about that, there you can see some fresh concrete here. This was a pit where the Zamboni went. That big blue boiler was up in the air here. Um, that big gray one was right on the back side here. And then this was all piping and mess. So, a lot of money for the project, but, you know, this right here, I mean, I'm really happy for the Park District to have this. I mean, you're going to see, I can see huge savings down the road with this. Huge. Mm. All right. Um, one more. <laughs> one more. So this is the actual control on the boiler itself. So when you asked about, does it tell you what's wrong? This right here is basically just like a scan tool for a vehicle. It tells you everything that's going on. Also, this ties in with building automation. So you can tie this into a laptop, your phone, and it can tell you what's going on. So if you have a flame failure in the middle of the night, you don't come into a cold building in the morning with a surprise. It tells you one o'clock in the morning, hey, you know, one is out, and then we can fix it appropriately. So send the signal to your phone. Yep. Unbelievable. Can you control it from your phone? Yes. You have supervisory controls through it as well. Hmm. Um, we don't have the software right now for that. Um, that's a separate price tag down the road. Um, I'm looking into doing some building automation with this um, system here. Um, but right now, with you physically go to the unit right now and see what's going on, which is very helpful. Um, we monitor them regularly, you know. So, but yeah, I mean, it tells you everything that's going on. Gives you outside temperature. What's your supply of heat, and then you know all your flue gases and your water temperature and things like that. Wow. Delta T. That's actually that key thing I was talking about with where your source of heating and where you're using it. When you get down to these one degrees, that's really efficient. Most systems, even like residential, you're like in the 30s. So that company doesn't have an app. Yes, they do. That goes into the phone. You just have to pay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah correct. Oh, still good. It's, oh. it's a software subscription that you get through. These mm -hmm. boilers are uh, Knights, um, Lock and Bar Knights. They're very high efficiency boilers. You can get the um, software through Lock and Bar. Okay. Um, we will probably look into doing that down the road. You know, get the pricing and um, look into doing it. Sounds good. Okay. All any right. Any, anybody have any questions? Know. No, it looks great. Yeah, it turned out it great. Looks really yeah, good. it looks it good. Out yeah. great. Good it job, like Rich. Good job, There's going to be some good budget yeah. money, or maybe more construction fund money. Or well, there <laughs> yeah. should be. We should have a nice savings. Yeah, I, think I can see in the next year. Yeah. So, like right now, your first year with having this system, it's mm -hmm. calibration, getting everything set and running like it should. Um, I can see in the next year you being able to take bills, you know, gas bills, 
within temperature readings, you know, you got to take a 30 degree day and compare it to another 30 right. degree day. Um, but if you compare them side by side, you should be able to really notice it's a difference. huge savings. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Sure. Executive session? No. Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything before we uh, close the door? I got my Wait. Which? Yes. Do you change the lights? <coughs> How you turn the lights on down here? Which lights? Those. Those are all on motion sensors individually. Oh, no more big box. Oh, you. Well, we still have the box, but it's not. No, no. Okay, I will go ahead and entertain a motion that we adjourn the meeting of the Zion Park District. I'll second it. I have a second. Okay, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye. Aye. Commissioner Rivers. Aye. Commissioner McGarry. Aye. President. Aye. Aye.